See, she's she's got the right idea. They're underdogs. They yeah, can do it. True. You she know, said they're going home. They're actually home already. Well, right? yeah, everyone's <laughs> at home. So, so you know, it's a figure of speech. They don't have to. That's the good news. If they do lose here, there's not a long plane ride of shame. They just get to uh, get back on, you know, the horse and ride again. But it's so true. I mean, we were watching that draft, and we were kind of in the same bandwagon, especially the Huskar pick. I, I just kind of went, no, just not this, because we've seen this matchup plenty of times before. Storms, they can't I, exist. I actually, I think I like their draft better than the last one. I'll be honest with Definitely you. Definitely. I, than the last I one. hate a bad end. I am a person that I feel like when you pick this hero, it's like. You need to just have it run, have it run like so well in the laning phase and everything. I feel like this one they actually can have a chance as long as like they don't lose two lanes completely horrible and they can actually get some farm. I feel like the key for me, to be honest, is, at least for me, I think is this Necro Shaker lane. I feel like you're already gonna accept that there's your storm and your your Terror Blade are gonna get pressured in your other two. I feel like the Necro and the Shaker can actually do something. Unlike in the last game where it's a Shaker and an Abaddon where. It's just not a good lane. This is actually a strong lane. This is what the panel even wanted, too. They're like, pair the Shaker with someone he can pressure with. That's the Necro. So, you know, I'm I'm definitely still siding with them. I think this is a really good Huskar pick. I also really love Wyvern right now and Tiny in the meta. And I think Spirit, they opened themselves up with a very nice starter with their first two picks. Wyvern Tiny. They left it very open. They can do so many different things with their draft. And then we see the trump card. When, when you see a team, last pick, a CM, the, the panel, you can see their reactions. Kyle immediately was just like, I, could, I, was actually, I couldn't even pay attention to hero picks because Kyle was just shaking his head the whole time in disappointment. <laughs> because you see a last pick CM and you see the other team last pick a Huskar. It's just like, I mean, it's well, a fair reaction, though. It's not like it's not like the side of underdogs had a pick that was elusive and go, like, the, for example, the tiny way, like, is that a core? Is that a support? Yeah. You know, you didn't really keep the side team spirit thinking on that final pick. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was, I was going to say the one good thing for the Storm is he will get dumps in lane, but of course this is a hero that can just subvert to the jungle and farm up there. It's not optimal to be forced out your lane completely, but he is a hero with a recovery option. I feel like he can't actually do that this game, though. I feel like it, for the first the first six levels, yeah, he can jungle, but I feel like if he's jungling and he's like level six or seven, then they're already in such a back foot because they have a Terror Blade. He has to actually be making plays in order to make space for this TB, who's going to get pressured. This isn't a TB who's versus that Shaker or Baden. He's actually versus a lane that's going to hurt him because it's, a, I mean, Brewmaster. Yeah, that's kind of the thing as well, is if the Terror Blade doesn't have an easy lane. We already said they've, they've kind of empowered Schlachlo and Yamish up here, but the TB is going to get pressured decently. And if a Brew gets a quick six, we've seen the impact. It's one of the biggest power spikes on a single hero at level six. Yeah, definitely. You get your solo kill pretty easily in your lane. I do like what Yamish done here, though, starting with the, uh, the Enchant Home. He switched his build, too. He went for a Stout Shield plus Triple Mango. He's learning. So yeah, he's, just, he's changing it a little bit here. I usually, I mean, I personally still like the Fissure at level one because you can cause so much havoc. It, maybe this one because he's versus the Wyvern. He's like, oh, if I Fissure, he's going to use the burn and he's going to fly over. And if you go on the Ember, he's a little bit more tanky with the stout as well. Yeah. It's not an easy kill. Uh, yeah, I still, yeah, I still, I still prefer shit with Fissure 90, 95% of the time. Yeah. But, you know, at least, you know, it's, it's a change a little bit here and already doing a little bit better off the start. And so far, the odds are definitely in favor of Team Spirit from the Bears. They are... Uh, I mean, the underdogs' rates could be worse. We've actually seen worse here so Yesterday, far. I saw like 4.4 4 for ridiculous. Lithium, right? Yeah, the Lithium Navia insane. one was much higher on the GG bet. So, yeah. Definitely a little bit more life there. The Slash, though, is actually suffering a little bit. He had some weird starting items. I was going to comment on them. He did double yeah. circlet at the start of this game rather than having more regen, which I'm not a big fan of. I think having just... Tango salves is incredibly useful, especially on a Necrophos, to be able to keep that pressure going. Now it's in a position where they have no regen in this lane, and he goes, he wants to use Courier, but we've got a Storm jungling already in this game. Who's going to need the Courier three. first? I was going to say, the thing as well is I like what FNG's doing. He's just spamming the spin of the blast because Schlachlow is forced to use the Death Pulse, so he's actually pushing the lane in return. Yeah, well, they know. I think the most important thing is just to keep spamming because they know he has no regen. Like, this this man burned all of his regen right at the start of the game because he went double circlet. Yamish? Yamish's taking a lot of damage, but he should just about be able to move away. Slash oh. did come out. Searing Chains won't connect. Close. Slash low. Needs to be careful. One more tap would have done it, but FNG can't find the target. He's got seven stick. He's kind oh. of baiting them a little no, bit He can split a blast soon. They need to be careful. There it is. Coming out. He'll move away just in time. Skit's going to chase, but gets Fissure blocked in. And that splits it up. Slash low will survive. But this is, I mean, when they are being this aggressive under your tower at level two, three minutes in, it kind of sends a message. Oh, FNG's like, wait, Storm's here. <laughs> oh, more people to harass Oh, FNG's going to oh, die. Oh, no, FNG makes a mistake. Static Remnant's going to hit. Final tap from Stormcat says, thank you very much. First blood drawn. 
And well, that's definitely something you need. And your appropriate amount of gold as well. Check that out. Mm, free tits. Oh, what are you trying to suggest? Are you, <laughs> are you saying we might might have GG betters in the lobby? Ooh. Nah, nah, we're not there. We're past that. That's the early days of Dar. They went a little bit too hard on the dive. I think they. Do, I don't know if they checked even Shastlo's stick charge. He had nine stick charges, seven stick charges when they're going for that dive. It's still a little bit tough for them to be able to burst them down. But bottom, we're seeing what we're talking about, right? It might be a support tiny, but support tiny, you can pressure TB pretty well as Skitter. Skitter's getting low. Enchant Term Stun connects. The Fire Tap's needed, but they can't find it. Slowed down by the Splinter Blast and Meme oh, on wow. the bot lane. They get a kill on the Brewmaster. We're just praising this tiny, but apparently they make the move and Hester Joe will fall. Very nicely done. Having the early level of the Reflection rather than going for the Illusion that we see mostly for to, to make sure you can get that farm up on the TB. Get some kill. Okay. Nicely done. I mean, that's kind of actually the thing here is typically you don't level the reflections. It's usually just yeah. the mirrors. Yeah, illusion. yeah, the illusions and the metaphors. And speaking of the man himself, Sidoi going to try and move away. Reflection might keep him alive here. Yep, he's going to walk it off. So definitely the right move. Not only does the game kill, it keeps him alive. Yeah. All in all, though, looking at this so far, the Huskar uh, is the one I'm going to watch. Storm is keeping up with him right now. I'm just thinking what hero does more as the uh, the minutes go and as we reach 10, 15 minute mark. And it's definitely going to be the Huskar. Yeah, it's Huskar. Because nobody, who look at their lineup, who kills Huskar? It's just Terrorblade. And Terrorblade's going to get, he's going to get slowed down because of this. He might get uh, killed. Clap comes in after the toss back. He's dead. Five in return. We'll walk away. You, he hits pretty pathetically. Mm -hmm. No more amazing denies from CMs or flashy plays for your right click damage. I mean, this is, this is kind of the thing as well. You look at the side team spirit. These two are very tanky. So for the side of underdogs, the only kill potential they have in this lane is with Metamorphosis. Yeah, definitely. That's usually the case with the Terrorblade too, but a Skater yeah. could go they down found here. him, yep. Serum Chain's going to come out, but they've got the stun locked down, and he's dead. Yamish will take the kill, so this, they need it more than you. This is what we're saying. This, this lane is actually pretty strong, especially when like, when you get level 3 on a Shaker with like any type of ranged hero, you've got your you've got your 3 spells, right? You've got your Enchant Totem that actually stuns, you've got your Fissure, you've got a good amount of damage coming through as well. So you. that's what we're seeing that's coming through as 9. Yeah, 9 4 battle. There's a TP in actually. They're going to frostbite on the spot. Yamish gets the enchant term stun, but they don't have the damage. We're just talking about this issue who's going to kill him and uh, not these three. Nope, definitely not, as it's only a level 5 storm, too. Biva was coming around the back, so it's a good thing they didn't commit or they would have died. He's trying, to get, he's he's trying to get information. It. He's got wards down. He wants to be placing these. As, he's going to make a lot of space here. Yeah, they're going to fissure block him in, though. Can he cut around? He could. Avalanche Toss is going to come out. A lot of damage happening. Can they get him quick enough? Yum will move away. Stormcat stands his ground, and Biva should be going down here. You did get the foul tap, though. That's a little bit greedy. He couldn't risk it, though, not with the uh, the tree. Of course, yeah. you can do the tap and the toss. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, things actually not looking terrible for underdogs right now. No, definitely not. I mean, it was a good fissure trap there. I thought he'd be able to walk out and be able to just keep running, running around the rosy versus, like, very little catch. But they do get the kill, which is nice to get this storm caught up. New on top. Slash low taking a lot of damage. He's pretty deep here. So Skidder's just going to run him down. The Ghost Shroud comes out, but they haven't got the Serum Chains to work with. There it is, holding in place. The fissure locks off. But actually, he blocks off his own Necrofoss with that. That was a rotation from Biver, though. Yeah. Smart play by Skitter. You see, he holds the chains all the way till they know that they're going to secure the kill, so there can't be like chains, and then an instant TP out. Oh, toss back. Himish is a little bit deep now. Needs to be careful. Skitter's going to chase. He does have the Serum Chains, but he's a little bit too far off. Space. Definitely space. See, this is the this is the order in which you get the boots. Oh, and he gets oh, secures the catapult oh, nice. last hit too. Very nice. Nine mid lane, full line and in. They might get him here. Yep. Thirty seconds on the sideline for the Huskar, and that's a beautiful takedown. Most important one right now as well. Mm -hmm. That storm has gotten several kills already in this early game that you wouldn't expect because of the laning start. He kind of—I mean—he got one for free because of FNG. But look at that, almost same net worth as the husk. There's only uh, there's only a first blood. It's nothing that big. <laughs> but yeah, this is—I mean—we were worried for this storm, but miraculously, between those kills and the fact he's in the jungle all the time, he's keeping up. Top lane, trying to make a move on Skitter, but the flame guard should protect him. The right click's coming out, but they can't chase. Uh, they need that six very quickly. Forces jump back from the storm. Huskar jumped forward. So they're at the stage, actually, once they get that six on Schlachlow, if they can put the Ember on the sideline for that extra time, that actually gives them full dominance in this lane. It's very hard for the Ember to hang around. I mean, if, if they get a Reaper kill, they can actually bring the Tower Blade to go for a Tower Push early on, because it's going to be a lot of time just added on to the respawn for them to actually pressure. Him. They want to be. I think they might want to be able to bail this Terror Blade out of bottom pretty soon. He doesn't really have a jungle to rely on, rely on because of the storm farming it right now. Yeah, he's a little bit greedy, and that's the thing. Brewmaster does have six as well, so that's problematic. Skidder gonna run down here on Necrofoss, actually over the Ghost Rod to stay alive. Searing Chains comes out. Well, Mana though, gonna move away. The Reaper Scythe doesn't do enough damage. The final tap does come, but it's only 16 seconds on the sideline for him. 
Things could be much worse. They're gonna chase in. FNG, FNG. surrounded. Free heroes here. It's a party. Brewmaster TPing in. They have to abort. Yamisha's gonna run to the top. Slash is gonna escape through the front. And actually, Yume's gonna run out the back. Nice fissure coming out. Does cover the escape. Ooh, so six actually, to two. Look at that. That's really big here because you just forced the Brewmaster to come up. It's not gonna find anything at all. Yeah. Now they've brought three bottom though on the side of Spirit. I think this tower blade it needs to find a different home. He's under heavy ward pressure inside Where of his jungle Where did you go, though? <laughs> we really said the jungle's been occupied. Stormcat, he made a reservation. Now he can, I mean, now he can. Storm's not there anymore. But there's lots of wards placed already, as we see, by Team Spirit. Again, similar to last time, Biver is very adamant about just keeping that pressure forward. All four wards are placed in aggressive manners to be watching jungle, because they know Storm or TB have to go to the jungle in this game, especially in this early start. Like, there's just not enough resources on the map for them to farm safely. Yeah, this is not the way you envision good communist society. It's not like the bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it comes out, Slatchlow, he's here. He has got the ghost shroud. What are you going to do? The fidget's going to come out. Cuts up the fight a little bit. Slatchlow will move away with the heals. He'll be fine. Ooh. Uh, she's going to turn around and just try and get some of these brews gone. Yamish needs to be careful. He should be fine, though. They're a little bit okay. too tanky. That's yeah. a completely wasted first split. That was a great... The fissure actually blocked off the uh, wind panda on the back, so he couldn't get the dispel, couldn't get any cyclone to continue the chase. And they had three heroes there, so they were able to protect themselves nicely versus that. And I like what's happening here, really. Underdogs are ignoring the Husker. Yes. Now, there are some scenarios we can go, oh, you can't ignore here. But this is one of those ones where you just have to accept Husker's going to have his way. You have to aim later. You have to farm to get there, though. And so far, things not looking too bad for underdogs. No, I mean, it's looking, looking pretty good. Although Nine is now farming their jungle. He's going to be punished for this. going to move in. Avalanche comes out. Looking on the CM. They're going to turn around. She should be falling here now. There's enough damage coming out of the Metamorphosis. They'll get the kill on the Nine. Way too aggressive there by the Huskar. Wants to play aggressive because he's got this deep ward vision, but you know that the Terra Blade's going to be there. You can get pincered really easy. There's so many so many ways for underdogs to surround you there. That was very deep forward. The only way he dies is if there's a uh, chain lockdown for the Storm to get on top of him, or if there's a Terra Blade meta there, and they had both. I mean, we said he, they'd let him have his own way, but this is this is having the cake and one to eat it. You can't. And yeah. he needs to calm down because this game is very easily losable. Huskar's a hero that relies on being ahead. Of course, with talent introduction, he's a little bit more relevant late game, but when you're up against a Necrophos, a Storm, and a Terra Blade, I don't think you want to be going to the 40-50 minute mark in this game. Definitely not. And you also don't want to be giving up kills because you are so far ahead in the early game that you end up giving quite a lot. Biver goes Biver. for a Courier. Couldn't get it. They glyphed, and now he got baited in. He's going to fall. The Frostbite there to hold him in place. The Tossback will not save his life, and that was on point from Underdogs again. Look at Biver. He's trying to do, he tried to do the tree throw to get the yeah. Courier, and they glyphed it. That was... It's very Top close notch. as well. Top notch right there. Love it. This is I, just look at the shift in their worth very quickly now. The only one sitting at the top for the side of Dyer is Huska. Yeah. And look at this. They're I mean they're they're playing smart. They abandoned the bottom lane completely on the side of underdogs. They know they can get kills out of this. But you is dead. He it's okay. It's just a CM kill. The good old traditional thought process for a CM support. It's just a CM kill. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this one might though. There's four heroes here. The Necrofrost is gonna TP out, they have no way to stop it, and they just wasted a lot of time. This is, they have to get the tower actually, otherwise this is completely not worthwhile. Ember is in the bot pushing as well. They should have, they be able to take this team fight because they've got the brew, they've got the wyvern, they've got their team fight advantages with their two ulties right now and I, I don't believe TB has meta ready and... Okay, but they still do have three heroes and Shaker is six. On yeah, the side that's what I was about to say, Shaker so. is six and this lineup likes to go deep as we've already seen from the side of Spirit. Yes, this is true. So they are going to have to be very careful about that. They, they will know the Shaker is six as well, that's the more important piece. There is a hood already finished up on the Necrophos, and I know Kyle was Kyle, Kyle said that you know you can't you can purge off the hood, you can't dispel pipe, Piper Hood. That's one of the few the few ones that you can't actually with the brew. Yeah, you were saying because you can actually dispel, for example, Crimson Guard. Yeah, it works on Crimson, but not on Piper Hood for some reason. Piper Hood, are, they're just god items. Like that, yeah. I'm pretty sure about the hood one. I'm not I'm not a hundred. I'm I'm like ninety something percent, but. I checked the like Liquipedia. And yeah, as I say, too, if Liquipedia is lying to us, that's that's not on us, right? We uh, we can't know 100 percent if uh, Liquipedia is shit. I checked to be certain. I, I, was, I was pretty sure because like we've we've had that discussion. We're like, wait, does it? But what about Crimson? Yeah, so I think one of my favorite ones that I was fearing uh, when we had like there was a CM deny yesterday. I was like, does Stout work on your own allies? <laughs> and it's like, no, it's like I don't know the answer. How often does that come up? Oh, that's toss true. back. Hume, he's pretty deep. Speaking of CMs, goodbye. That's four heroes again, though, for a CM kill. You're trying to find the entrance into their jungle because you need to get down soon to reward. But right now, 
we can already see what's happening in the top. They're going to start pushing on this lane. No one's showing. And we said this was the favorable move for underdogs is to start taking this top tower. Yeah. And I mean, they've got their three cars are farming really damn well, to be oh, honest. Fisher in the bot lane. Skid has been found. It's going to use the remnant to move away, though. Stormcat can't chase. I think they would have if it, was, if it wasn't for the DD. You don't want to risk it there. But all in all, so far, it's just a little bit of poking and prodding. But underdogs are keeping in this. I mean, they're in, a, they're in a good spot right now. They just have to watch out for the husk. They have to watch out for this husk card to not get a Roche timing. And then they just snowball off of that one. Right now, they, they can take these fights as long as it's not all of Spirit. If all of Spirit's oh, there, they want to be careful. Scythe the top. Hester Joe gets low. He won't go to the Scythe, but he will still fall. And now they should be able to push on this tower for free. Uh-oh. And this is problematic. That is going to open up your jungle, of course. And, well, that's going to pressure, especially Haskai, to play more in the Radiant side of the map to create space. Speaking of Haskai, he's actually up here. I would advise leaving those. Oh, the curse set up. Oh, when his curse comes out, hitting on the two, it's going to help the burn spears there. Slash is going to take a lot of damage. Go Shroud, trying to move away. He's burning up, but should be fine to move away. So he's going to go forward, sees the opportunity to Yume. Moves in, they get to come to Necrophos, and Yume dances his life off, won't matter. He does fall. Perfect curse there by FNG. And you see Nine, even though he doesn't do damage, he's stacking up the Fire Spears on the Necrophos, so when he does pop Ghost Shroud, we'll be able to get that damage through. That was a perfect Wyvern curse, and just having them all set up there completely counteracts everything that was just happening. And now they have Brute Blink Dagger. That's the big thing for Spirit. Uh, Nine, going to work on Sidoy here. Sidoy getting low. Oh, he can't get the Sunder out. He couldn't turn around in time. Oh. That's a big pick off as well. Okay, and that's pretty much the Halberd done. And the Halberd... Halberd Huskar, we said the big thing to kill him is either lockdown control or having the Tower Blade there. Halberd's going to counteract a lot of that TB. Quick yes. swing of events there. Put Spirit now back in the lead a bit, and the Bounty Runes will be coming out. Let's see who claims them. Mm. Nice Ooh, Fissure in the bot. Five has been seen. Going to move across. Just zipping in now. He's pretty tanky, but is he tanky enough to like this? No, the Echo Slam comes out. They won the kill very badly. Avalanche, Biver, he will go down, but he makes him work for it. Yeah, Stormcat had a regen during part of that one too, so he still has a little bit of mana to work with. He has got the Kai now, so he can be a little bit more aggressive, and he's close to the level 2 ball lightning as well. Yep. Meanwhile, Schlachlo can't get the deny. He showed no, himself though. Yep, they're going to chase in. Skid is here. He does, of course, have the Searing Chains for the Slight Fist. They're going to move in, surround him, and Schlachlo, he's done so. No way out of this. He's going to use the Hood of Defiance, it won't change the outcome though. They should still be able to find him, or will they? The Crystal Nova come out, slow him down, but he's trapped in the trees. They ping it already. They know. He's down. And Yamish. Because he's that echo in the bot lane, no chance of a reset here. They could go to Roche. They are going to go Roche by the looks of it. It is a possibility. They have their Bruce split. They've got the Halberd. There is a decent chance they could try for it right now. Mm, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with with the Bruce split, they just got their they got the tower. They got deep aggressive wards down. So now they can actually get information if the Radiant does actually try to step forward. Well, that's the thing. The tier one mid was gone for a long time. Now the tier one top. There's no easy, quick way for yeah. the side of Underdog to respond. And if they do, yeah, if they do, they're under vision. So they just got that from FNG. So this should be free rush. Yep. Doesn't 3, 000, cost them anything. 3,000 HP Huskar. Level 13 with an Aegis. This is the time to shine for Spirit. He's slightly tanky. Just, just a tiny bit. Just a tad. And well, that's kind of the price. I think that all happens based. I mean, of course, those pickoffs are good. But that Echo Slam being used in the bot lane meant there was no threat to Team Spirit. Now they're going on Schlatch though as well. Life Break doesn't purge. He actually goes on to Creep instead. The Ghost Shroud will run out and he's dead. Yeah, it was just like that series of events, right? Top getting that beautiful curse by FNG, then bottom, then have to overcommit to try to kill a Tiny. Who's, it's a support Tiny, but he's still tanky. They lose out on a lot going for that. As it's a 4k advantage now for Spirit, and they're starting to get that map control going. And this is really popular as well, these type of supports for uh, a lot of teams of the four role right now. Is it used to be the big initiate is like the Sand King and Earth Shake all the time. We do see a lot of Shaker, but we also see a lot of things like Tiny because you've got so much health, you can just brawl all yeah. the time. I mean, we don't see the four Tiny so much, but it, it is similar concept. Like, mm. you're just this tanky, obnoxious hero that's just standing in the front lines. And if you do get your Blink Dagger, you can kill support heroes pretty easily as that support, as that support position, Tiny. Luckily for the side of underdogs, they still have their tier one bot, which is actually is a miracle. Well, usually this is the quickest tower to fall in the game, I find. Yeah, I'm surprised how long it actually survived, especially with them like moving so much out of there, right? They ditched that bottom lane quite a long time ago, but Spirit's been, they've been playing around the top side of the map majority, I think because they want to focus on the Roshan. And, you know, Castle Curse is happening here. The moment we speak of it, it happens. That's like 100, 100 HP or Yeah, something. it should be happening. They were squaring around there and then Storm realized it was pointless. Yeah. But this is the thing as well, because Team Spirit haven't felt a necessity to take that tower because they haven't needed to play in the underdog's jungle defensively, right? Mm -hmm. If they're in there, it's because they're hunting and looking for kills. Which did backfire at the start on the Storm multiple times. Yeah, I mean, Nine playing a little over-aggressive got him killed a few times too. 
But now, now they're super comfortable. They've got the big team fight ready. They've got their blink dagger, which has been finished on the brew for quite a long time. All ulties are ready. Age is done. They're feeling very, very good. So, oh, Bloodstone on the Storm. So I think the Bloodstone idea on the Storm is just that he wants to go super late game. Like You're they want to just take it to late game versus a Huskar. Yeah, you're kind of all in on that as well. It's like basically, at this stage, it either backfires heavily and you're done, or it works out really well. And this is a good start to it. They're going to find the Ember. Nice control. Yamich finding yeah. 500 gold, too, for the Shaker. That could, that, is that, the, that is the Blink Dagger, right? That I think should be, up. yeah. But he doesn't have the Echo anymore is the yes. problem. BKB is almost complete for nine as well. They're smoked up around him. And they have to do something about his Huskar, but what? They could go for the Scythe. They need to damage to follow up. Avalanche, toss, toss back. They found the Necrofoss himself. Ghost Shroud's gonna come up. The Fish is gonna be there to jump in. They're gonna look for the kill. The side comes down, but the winner's curse on the side. They pop the Aegis. But in response, they're gonna lose the storm. <laughs> and now Tiny's gonna go down for it. Vengeance is being had. But Brew Muscle split moving forward. The stun's drawn up on the Yume. He tries to run away, but he can't do it quick enough. Freezefield's gonna come out by a little bit of time to kill him off so quick. Slash low, trying to move away, should be fine. The buyback comes out and CM. The blink forward, Yumi's trying to stun up these brews. But one of them, of course, is immune. He'll move away. That resets things, and actually a decent hold so far, but the problem is Skid is now arriving. Serum Chain's gonna come out, the remnants, he's getting ready to spam, decides against it when he sees the heals. I need to be careful about this, actually taking a lot of damage. Nine, Nine. needs to move away, but can he quick enough? The Cold Embrace to try to keep him alive. But when he comes out, who's supporting? The pull line and in, Stormcat ready to party once more, goes for the back line, finds the Wyvern. They're gonna lose the Huskar as well. And Underdogs with the buyback, they hold. Woo! That was, and they needed that so much as well, because that was looking incredibly grim. You were almost 20 minutes in, and teams were, you kind of look at that fire, it's like, how do they possibly lose this high ground push? But it looked like they got, they overextended a little bit, and then on the retraction, the Wyvern and the Huskar were a little bit too split up. Yeah, I mean, it gets the cold embrace off, but I mean, they have the, the blink the blink on the Shaker, the crucial thing there. Just, we were talking about what kills the Huskar, right? It's having him controlled and having the TB hitting him. He gets chain locked down by the Earth Shaker, and they, even though it's a buyback, and I think at the last 15, 20 seconds for the Storm, I think it was, well worth it to be able to defend that tower. So then they don't, kill your shrines as well too. And now they're able to get themselves some bounty runes too. So we saw what, it was like six or seven K gold advantage for Spirit, knocked down to three. This is the kind of point in which you need to make that recovery. Of course, like you said, the Shaker Blink pickup was crucial here. Yep. It is one of the biggest pickups in the game at the moment with popular heroes is obviously Blink is good on most heroes, but Shaker, he's on a whole other level right now. Yeah, and he gets levels from all this. It's important. You get higher levels of your Echo Slam, so it reduces the cooldown, so the frequency is more often, so you can set up for those kills. And he's just leeching XP here because he does almost have the level 2 Echo. Exactly. As Cedoy, still a bit far, from, I mean, 1300-ish away from the, the BKB. I like Not this going for this, though. Uh, you could be greedy. We see a lot of Terrorblades tend to be greedy, but Terrorblade is one of those just huge power spikes with a BKB right now. Metamorphosis gives you so much damage already. Yeah. I mean, he has to just make sure he doesn't die in one combo, right? Like, get, get tiny comboed, and then Ember jumps forward and cleans him up. This actually allows him to have a little bit more freedom rather than being super careful. It's just have to be so aware of his position. This gives him much easier access into the fights. But of course, that BKB is now there for Haskar. Stormcat yeah. is just scouting out. He's probably going to try and cut the creep wave. He needs to be careful, though, because if they catch him oh. on the skirts. Oh, no, the smoke just broke. FNG's probably like, what? They don't. Okay. FNG's like, whatever, just keep pushing. He I mean, they must assume it's a storm, if anyone, and that's a hard catch. I, I don't know if he even noticed at first. Like, he's now pinging himself. Like, usually, when you do like, that, wait, you ping happened? yourself. Yeah, he didn't even ping himself right now. He's pinging. He's like, wait. Well, that's a fair point, because when you smoke up, you're not looking at yourself. You're looking elsewhere on the map. Exactly. And look at this. And he smoke scout up. Yeah, he scouted them with the, on the storm when he was on the side. So now they're bringing everyone bottom. Yep, the moon in. Ball line and Stormcat going to the back foot. Sees FNG. The BKB comes up nine, but no, Stormcat can't get involved. The Echo Slam connects on the two. The side down. They get rid of the brew. Nine with the BKB. Going to try to chase on here, but FNG on the side. Cold Embrace on himself. They're going to chase forward. Looking along the Terror Blade. They might be able to get him. The toss in the air is going to be enough down. Sunder comes Sunder. out. No, he's going to be fine. He'll back away. And now the BKB ran out nine. He needs to get out of here. He's going to use the jump forward to try to get the kill, but he will die in return. The final tap is there. Double kill for Slash Low. And there's the back foot. Skidder will find the kill on Yamish. But all in all, that's a 10 second BKB reveal from the Huskar. That's a buyback on the Wyvern that can't even get in the fight again. Underdogs, once again, take, I'd say, a good fight. Yeah, it's it's slight, slight lead for them. It's not massive because they can't turn it into anything. That's the one thing. But yeah, they slow down the push of a Huskar, and that's what their draft wants to do. They don't want to let this Huskar take their buildings early on. They want to drag the game out. So, yep, step one. Very nice control there from the Shaker. Just focusing. He knew, I need to make sure this brew does not get split off. He threw everything. I don't think the Echo Slam, I think maybe some of the Echoes hit the Wyvern, but yeah, his focus it was just yeah. control, brew, don't let the brew get the split off. And it's not easy to make that sort of reaction that quickly because the thing to keep in mind is Nine getting the BKB off at that point 
you expect it, but not at that very moment, because obviously the optimal scenario is you get between the two, you hit the Echo, you sure. party. But, you know, the, the bad news is they did let the Terrorblade die, but honestly, Nine is so far ahead right now, it's worth making that sacrifice to get rid of it. Yeah, I, would, I mean, with their draft, right, they, they, they need to keep stalling and stalling and stalling for TB to get farmed. That being said, though, you know, we're talking a lot about the stalling because they have TB Storm. Spirit, they do have things to rely on as the later game does progress. Sure, Huskar falls off, Ember gets stronger, Brewmaster gets stronger because he gets all those auras. So they can still take battles as Stormcat. FNG, Stormcat going for this pretty deep. When is Kurz going to come out? Oh no! They're going to have the Avalanche at the ready. And he's in trouble. Searing Chains is there and Storm gets greedy, pays the price. Oh, he just got his Bloodstone too. As That's those charges tick down. And he used buyback. So even though he has Bloodstone, so fast to respawn, he used buyback. Still 40 seconds for Spirit to put pressure on. And, I mean, that's the result of those previous two fights. You take two good engagements like that, suddenly you get a little bit overconfident. It's just a Wyvern. Surely I can kill it. And now you're going to lose your Tier 2 in the mid. Slow it down a bit, but still 25 seconds without the Storm, and 9 hits Taz pretty hard. They still got that ward on the bot lane on the side of yeah. Team Yeah, I mean, it was pretty sneaky the way they placed it. Mm. Problem is, they're not likely to go back there anytime soon. The line's no. actually been drawn, so Tiny wants to go there, mainly because they know the Terra Blade is around here. I think the next goal for Spirit is really just push lanes out and go for second Roche. Aegis Cheese is usually your high ground uh, and your high ground end as a Huskar. Like the first Aegis is you secure full map control, you throw, you try to maybe end the game, but you don't overcommit too hard. Aegis Cheese is where you really want to close it out. The concern is now with the blink on the Shaker, suddenly it's not as easy to get into the Exactly. Pit. And now they also, I mean, I don't know if they did see, they haven't seen it yet, but the Terra Blade did just pick up the BKB too. Sashlo, very Sashlo, far they're up. see him though. Gonna move in, the Ghost Shroud's gonna come out, but they use the split, they're gonna jump in. Life Break gets dodged out by the Yules, but is a little bit too deep and he'll fall. Ball lining in, Stormcat trying to get the back foot, decides against it though. The chase and fall, they do see Yume. Nice Fissure to block off the chase though. Stormcat's gonna move away, they actually just jump forward. Tiny being pretty greedy here is gonna toss back on the Stormcat and there's gonna be used to the Winner's Curse. Set up. Can they lock him down this time? They already used the Avalanche though. Stormcat, ball lining away, he's safe. Or is he? Five of oh, pings. Oh, and mana. He's got a lot of mana. Ooh. Just enough to get to the high ground. Hey, he's TP. Oh. TP, no. He gets found with a toss. The Avalanche follow up. Five will be able to kill. No, the deny comes out. That was that was some really nice mana usage there by Stormcat, but still unable to get there because Viber's got the Blink Dagger as we now see that big gold shift. It was a down to 2k a couple he minutes ago. He just bummed up. And bigger problem because they just gave the entrance that the side of Spirit were looking for to the Roche. Yeah, and they've got, like, the Vlad's finished up on the Brew a while ago, so the sustain's gonna be there for them to do this Roche. Nice and the safe. Movement. Shake is leading. They wanna stop this. There's only two in the pit, though. This is not easy. Nine has a lot of magic resistance. Let's go out. You meet on the high ground. Do they go for this? Yeah, he, he goes is. in. There's a dunk. He's gonna get it, but the Avalanche interrupts him. No, Nine gets the Aegis, and they'll kill off Yamiche. And that works against him. Now moving forward, Slash has been seen and purged. Ghost Shroud's gonna cut. Scythe is down. Slams him once. But that's the Aegis. He was coming out. Slash needs to escape. Viper moving forward with the haste. He is very dead. He's gonna alone. push him back towards Skitter. And the lockdown is there. Ah, oh, they committed. They didn't They didn't like both go at the same time. The Shaker was a little bit hesitant. They didn't have much of the rest of the backup too. He really wanted to just try to go for the steal, but ooh, that's costly. Now they have no Echo Slam for the high ground push. That might not have been worth it at all. I mean, they get rid of the Aegis, but still, like you said, no Echo. It might just be the team's for goes into your base. They do have the big AB for nine, of course. Oh, Sidoi. Sidoi used meta. They're aware of it now, too. They're oh, chasing him. They're chasing in. He hasn't got the BKB for 25 seconds. They actually don't hit the Searing Chains. He's looking for him. Too late. Cool. They can't get close enough for the Winner's Curse. That was uh, that was a risky play coming out from Sidoi. Luckily for him, he, he doesn't pay a price. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, though, they found the Tiny. He's trying to run lucky. him down. He's so damn tanky, though. Oh, jump in. Clap oh. comes out. Yumi's turned around on, and actually, they'll lose Yume. That's, I mean, having these like support tinies is, yeah, 1900 HP, the CM and the Shaker try to go for him, and he's like, ha. <laughs> he's like, guys, I'm buying time. Where are you? On the other side of the map. Can you hold them? Yeah, I'm a tiny. Yep, tiny. Well, as a result of that, CM down, they'll move in. She's only dead for 20 seconds, but it's not often a freezing field is decisive in these fights, especially against a Husker. Mm-hmm. Still no. Stormcat. No, oh, he, he gets, gets caught by the Searing Chains. What are you doing? You're dying. He's gone for 50 seconds. He does have buyback, and he's going to have to use it here. Uh, didn't zip far enough, I guess. I, that's one way to look at it. Yeah, I got caught by chains. I mean, that should not ever that. be happening. No, I can't be doing that. I mean, that's, that just gives it free racks. Big mistake coming out. He doesn't want to buyback, though, so they might lose two lanes. They're they still have don't have defend. them. Yeah, they, as we see, we, they still don't have the meta, so they just don't even want to try to take the fight. He was trying to stall. 
Yep, they don't have meta or echo. So this is, I mean, this could easily be two lanes. Mm -hmm. They still got the cheese on nine. Echo's off cooldown now. There's still 15 seconds until Storm arrives. Yun Chen's going to come out. Yule's onto the Ember. He's going to move far forward, but they haven't got the follow-up. Crystal Nova's slowing down a little bit. But Nine just keeps on knocking on your builds. Near solution. Hester Joe moving in with the clap. Needs to be careful himself. They have got the Scythe. The Glimmer Cape means they can't use it. Sadoi, he TP's here. He's ready to go. Scythe's going to come out. Bruce fine, though. Hester Joe took nowhere near enough damage. There's a the ball lightning in. Nine. BKB comes out. Blue Room again. No! Storm gets found again. 60 seconds dead. Now the Winner's Curse going to come out. They're going to stack up the burns onto this Necrofoss, and he cannot get out of this. He was going to come out. Buy back. They're going to move in. Storm Cap, but no, they eat the cheese. Now he needs a retreat plan. He wants FNG. They dunk. Comes out, but FNG, he's still alive. The Cold Embrace won't protect him. He will go down on the back foot. They're going to lose Storm again. That's a dieback. Now they're going to be ran over. Yumisha's going to go down. The BKB coming up, but disarms the door. He can't do anything. He's finally going to turn around, but he's alone. GG comes out. And despite. Well, I'd say a much better start to this game than we expected. Team Spirit are relentless. They still showed some, they showed some life on underdogs. I think one of my think my concerns, I guess, was actually the, uh, the they committed a lot to make sure this Necro had a good game, right? To make sure he was farmed and put pressure on. But I feel like Sasha. I thought every time we were looking, it was just like Sasha's dead. Sasha's dying again, over and over and again. It was. I mean, it was a better attempt than the last game, and I liked their approach a tiny bit better, but it was, I mean, they got last pick Huskard a little bit. But they at least, I mean, they at least could like take bit. some fights here. Their opener, I think their draft opener was a little bit stronger too. But when you're last picking a CM, it's awkward. I mean, that's the thing. The team Spirit, that was looking grim from the draft. But then, well, not for them, for underdogs. Yes, but, for underdogs. But from the perspective of how that early game played out, underdogs are thumbs up. This is looking great. Definitely. The amount of kills that Storm got meant he'd recovered, really. He was six and one. Like after being versus the Huskar, and then it was just like chain after chain after chain. I think I think Kyle was the one who talked about it too. It's like Ember Spirit versus Storm. It used to be that Storm can actually do okay a little bit, but now with the introduction of talents, it's like a four second route. It's and ridiculous. he doesn't have a BKB. He gets chain locked down over and over again as he tries to commit forward. And, and FNG got some clutch setups too from the curse. I mean, that's the thing. As a Storm, you don't want to get a BKB quickly. As we saw, he wanted the Bloodstone, which we said, yeah, he's going late. This is the plan. But then that first death, and that second death, he like, both the same scenarios, just the Searing Chains come out, and it felt not as much that Team Spirit played that moment well, it was more that Stormcat was just choosing very bad locations to stop with the ball lightning. Yeah, he get, he jumped in a little short a few times, got killed, and they were also, you know, we say they had some signs of life, but they were really on the back foot majority of this game. They were at a deficit in gold majority of the time, and I never saw them actually making the moves. There was a lot of responsive plays. Yeah, and as a result, we get a 2-0 here. Expected. I mean, I mean, well, it was expected. They were the underdogs. But in fairness, like uh, compared to how people criticize them from the draft, it looked like underdogs might be able to take it. But Team Spirit kept the composure. And, and that's the biggest notice is, is between these tier two, tier three, tier one teams is when you get past that early mid game, you can make a lot of mistakes there and get away with it. The late game, just one or two errors and you're done. Yep. But as a result of that, I mean, that, that's our thoughts. I want to know what the panel thinks.